Hello guys, this is Isis Priestess. Welcome back to my channel. Um, same position as before, um, mainly because um, I actually look like I'm looking at the screen. Um, often on my back, it still hurts when I move my arm. Um, this one, not this one. Um, I'm hoping it'll be better by the end of this week. I really do. Um, I'm hoping better by at least the third because I'm going out to Burr's Town Road, I hope I pronounced it right, um, because I want to go and look at all of the places. Okay, so um, I'm doing a book review, first one on this channel, and it is going to be for um, this book, Handbook to Life in Ancient Egypt by Rosalind David. Um, funny thing is, this is actually a, um, a reference book. Um, up in Massachusetts, um, reference books were kept separate from regular books. Down here, they put them together. So, um, yeah, somebody let me check it out. <laughs> um, I'm not going to really go into detail about the book because um, I don't want to get to 15 minutes. But, um, yeah, um, there's a lot of illustrations in the book. Um, and I really do like that. Um, here is um, chapter one is um, the historical background, and it really gives you um, a um, um, kind of a um, detailed um, account of things, um, like the table of events, um, well, like the old kingdom, the middle kingdom. Um, the um, New Kingdom or later, later period. Um, um, it, it goes, it really goes into like talking about the different periods before Egypt was unified. Um, lots of really interesting uh, pictures, um, like this one right here. Um, they talk about the structure of society, the funerary customs. Um, religious organizations, the sun god, um, the most important and successful deity during the Old Kingdom was the sun god Re, whose center was at um, Heliopolis. Um, the uh, pyramids, which were seen as um, linked to the sun cult, and I will say this, unlike other forms of polytheistic worship where you could destroy the temples and you could destroy the statues. Um, Re was very different. He was the sun. You cannot just destroy the sun. So it was much easier, I think, for a lot of people that were either hiding the fact is that they were still practicing Egyptian paganism to worship Re uh, because um, he was still around. Um, the top of the solar temples, um, just a whole bunch of different things. The first intermediate period, um, religious development, the Middle Kingdom. Um, so yeah, so it goes into a lot of really, it goes into a lot of details about different things like um, how the mummy developed, um, you know, how it, it suddenly stopped being um, for the rich and it became for the, um, well, it stopped being something for the king correction and something for the rich. Um, and they talked about the divine wife of Amun, the reign of Ptolemy the I, um, the Roman period. They talked about um, Christianity. Um, it says here that um, uh, Christianity ceased to be the official majority religion of the era of conquest of Egypt in 641. When Islam was introduced, many Christians were converted, but strong Christian communities also survived, especially in the South. Um, so it, it kind of makes you think, well, how in the world did a religion like Christianity cease to be majority and now it's a minority? And it's simple. In my own case, they allowed it to happen. Um, it was really cool is that um, they give you like reading, um, 
reading um, list, which is really cool. And they have like the geograph geography of ancient Egypt, um, and dictation of the Nile. Um, all in all, it's a very great book. Um, they do talk about magic in here, but it's not like Wicca magic. It's everyone did it. Um, you know, religion and um, the state were not separate. Um, I know here in the United States, we have the uh, separation of church and state, which is not actually in the Constitution. Um, I have read it. Um, but it is um, something that has become so important that people automatically assume that it is in the Constitution when it's not. But religion and state, not separate. Um, in the book, it also talks about like the household deities, the deities of the poor, um, the deities that the poor um, talk to or gave offerings to, um, to um, you know, um, a piece or to, um, you know, help them out. Um, now, the book says that the poor did know a little bit about the function of what went on in the temples, but they weren't allowed to be a part of that. Um, behind, especially the temple of, um, not the temple, um, I know that the temple of Karnak had different precincts. And um, you could actually, um, they had like a little, kind of like an ear, and you would speak in it, and the priest would um, relay back to you what was being, what the god said. Um, that was really interesting. And if you go to Rome, not Rome, sorry, if you go to Pompeii, I don't know why I said Rome. Um, when you, if you go to Pompeii and you go to the temple of Isis at, at Pompeii, you will see this kind of like this hole and um, that was where people went to ask um, you know the gods questions um, all in all um, I give this um, you know when I do book reviews I'm going to be like you know six stars is the best and one star is the worst um, I'm going to give it six stars um, is really great is it this book is excellent for people that are just starting to learn about Egyptian um, history and about the people and most of all about the gods and goddesses and magic and, and stuff like that so highly recommend the book um, but yeah um, like I said great book um, now I don't know when I'm gonna do another book review um, I'm hoping to do a book review probably in about two or three months but if I do another book review, um, you will know. So um, I hope all of you are going to have a wonderful end of your week. Um, for those people out there that celebrate Easter, happy Easter. Um, it happens to be on my uh, on my brother's birthday. <laughs> He's not exactly a big fan of that. Um, but yeah, so um, I will let you guys go. And until next time, may the goddess watch over you.